Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our topic is the meeting of the foreign ministers of the Quad in Melbourne on the 11th of uh, September. But today is a rather important day, and we cannot start this discussion without referring to what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. Today is uh, 22-2-2022, so all twos. It's a very significant day in that sense, uh, but that seems to be marking a change, a turning point in the crisis between Russia and Western Europe. It is not, it's not a war yet. As of now, when we are talking at 5.30 on 22 uh, the war is not there yet, and the CNN is reporting that we are on the edge of war. So what is the difference? The difference is that Putin has not declared war against Ukraine. In fact, he had always said that he had no intention to invade Ukraine. And he has kept that even now, even though he has ordered some troops, Russian troops, to enter, enter parts of Ukraine. There are two provinces in Ukraine which are already considered themselves independent. And they are mostly Russian-dominated regions in the east. And uh, these have been fairly, it, it's like a, like a revolt going on for quite some time. And uh, Putin has been supporting, Russia has been putting, supporting them, giving them arms and armaments and so on, but not personally going there. So, but it was very well known that they had a special interest there. And so what Putin is now saying is that, first of all, he recognized these two territories as independent states. That's quite dramatic. It has not been done before. Uh, disputed, but not independent states. That is major change. Uh, but he is not saying it is an invasion. He says, I'm sending some troops there uh, for um, peacekeeping operations, for pe keeping the peace, because Ukrainian authorities are uh, suppressing them, oppressing them, etc. And these people have the right to self-determination. And therefore, uh, Russia is simply supporting the self-determination of these people. And therefore, not to create any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, destruction, he is sending some troops. So this is slightly different from what he has been saying so far. That you know what he was trying to do was to get security assurances for himself. So these are two different things. What he has done now is to basically what he calls to save the people of these two regions. While what he started off was with a view to getting the um, security guarantees, like that uh, Ukraine will never be will not be allowed into NATO and there'll be no further expansion of NATO eastwards, et cetera, et cetera. And so the war is still not there. There are still possibilities of avoiding a war, but I just mentioned it because what we are going to say about the changes in the world, which we talked about last week, are relevant in the context of Ukraine and what, what is happening there. So at the moment, uh, there is still no war between Russia and Ukraine. And um, even the Americans and others are not talking of war, but they are only talking of sanctions. So let's hope that uh, this will not become a full-scale war because that will have implications for all of us and particularly for India. So in this context, it's interesting as to what happened in Melbourne, the Quad ministerial meeting. Because just before the Melbourne meeting, there was a very important summit meeting between President Putin and President Xi Jinping in, uh, in Beijing, about which we talked. So this was a very historic change in the whole situation in the world, uh, because instead of a two-way Cold War, we now have a three-way Cold War, for example, or, or at least two Cold War with the uh, US on one side and Russia and China on the other side because it has implications for India, which we already covered. But um, what has happened as a result of that is this Ukraine drama uh, very much dominated the Melbourne meeting. 
and uh, one could see though nobody declared anything uh, new but one could see that the focus of of what is shifting from an anti china position to a pro quad position you may have read uh, the editorial in the hindu which said quad is now for something not against anything and this is different from what it was what it was originally meant in 2017 as a kind of grouping against china so in the conversations that were held in uh, melbourne none of these four foreign ministers spoke about china as such there was some kind of a reference to the uh, you know the possibility of um, you know not possibility the need for open uh, india india pacific which is a fundamental thing about free and open india pacific apart from that there was not even a suggestion that uh, quad is an anti uh, china move because now it is not only china which is opposing the quad but also russia in a big way because what russia is saying is what the, what the chinese are saying also in the context of uh, uh, the the quad that they don't even accept the term indo pacific russia also says that china also says that so which means they both the countries are opposed to the concept of a indo pacific itself it has to be asia pacific so that's a serious matter and therefore some kind of a division has taken place india for example has become very careful about talking about ukraine because ukraine is the burning issue but no discussion i'm sure there must have been discussion but in the joint statement issued in melbourne has no mention of ukraine there is a mention of um, burma myanmar but there is no mention of ukraine and this apparently as a result of india's reluctance uh, to say anything critical about uh, ukraine in fact uh, our external affairs minister was asked about ukraine at this meeting by a journalist and then he was a bit uh what shall we say restless about that because he started by saying that ukraine is not on the agenda of this meeting and then he went on to say whatever we have to say about ukraine we have said it in this security council of the un so there also we did refrain from criticizing russia because we did not suggest that there would be a war between ukraine and, and russia Uh, but generally saying that everybody should be peaceful and there should be no conflict etc etc which we normally say so india's dilemma about ukraine is very much evident uh, in the was evident in the in the melbourne meeting and uh, the uh, speeches made by all the four foreign ministers you know talked about uh, partnership after talking just a little bit about uh, uh, free and open indo pacific they went straight into all the nice things they want to do for indo pacific without any reference to any threat to indo indo pacific so they said that uh, quad is an opportunity and it is an opportunity for also to compare notes on what we had originally said and also these foreign ministers meeting was meant to be preparatory Uh, to a face to face quad summit in in tokyo in uh, june july or may june 2022 so this was in preparation for that and so one would have expected some sharp uh, references without mentioning china but this was avoided there and they talked about uh, various things that they can do and uh, specifically the uh, the uh, the american uh, secretary of state referred to india in his opening remarks when he said india's leadership of many issues including covid-19 he should have said many issues including ladakh but that's not what he said so the sharpness of or a, of a military angle to the covid to quad uh, seems to be fading away so this is an opportunity for the region and in india also in its response to the us external affairs minister 
We talked about concrete and actionable proposals. And um, Indo-US relationship has been a defining relationship. So he also put that in the context of India-US relations, rather than the context of a grouping of countries wanting to do something for their own security. So these are uh, nuances, but certainly there were some indications about uh, Quad becoming less of a, of a military alliance, which of course it, was, it is not meant to be, but that sharpness is, seems to be disappearing. So it was more a talk about a bilateral opportunity and uh, rather than a multilateral opportunity. So this was after two summits and uh, before another summit. And so you can see what I wanted to bring to your attention was there is an evolution in the, in the quad. Of course, the uh, quad adds muscle to the whole relationship among these four countries. And um, it augurs well for the Tokyo summit, other members said. And uh, the underpinnings of it were clearly defined. And the uh, Quad will take off with the agreement to share to a shared agenda. And um, so into a, an agenda of a vision uh, for, uh, for the Quad. So the, uh, the reason is, I think, the Russia-China alliance or relationship which has been concretized in Beijing has caused some consternation and some surprise, some uh, new element into, into the Quad and its countries. And so it's very interesting what were the uh, ideas they discussed. First one, vaccine support. This is a decision taken at the summit. And uh, so they straight away jumped into vaccine support and how much, uh, you know, medicines they have exchanged, how new vaccines have been developed, and recognition has been given to each other's vaccines and so on. Very harmless, very important, but uh, purely on a humanitarian or health perspective. The second is critical technologies, how the Quad countries can develop technologies. There are so many technologies being developed in different parts of the world. Uh, but uh, countries like uh, India, US, Australia, and Japan have such special competencies. Some have the money, others have the technology, others have the critical ability to manufacture. Um, and uh, so there is a, is a complementarity among these countries to develop what different technologies. And that, again, nobody would dispute. And the third was counter-terrorism. Again, that's like motherhood. Nobody can object counter-terrorism because all these countries have been affected. And uh, the next was supply chains. Again, of concern for everybody because of the China's delicate situation. And uh, so alternate uh, chain supply chains have to be developed. Competence have to be developed and therefore that's an important matter. And it was made one of the very important aspects of the cooperation. And the last was a stable Afghanistan, on which all the four have more or less the same views as the United States. And um, so all these seem to suggest uh, that the uh, shift is uh, taking place. And then there was a, a curious uh, reference to the Quad working with UAE to counter radicalization of, um, of uh, certain areas, because they mean Islamic countries, and also to promote global peace. And uh, so in that effort that is outside the Quad, they were talking about basically the UAE as a partner. And then more importantly, nothing new, uh, centrality of ASEAN. So none of the ASEAN countries is in the Quad as yet, but there are candidates like Indonesia, Philippines, etc. have also been uh, intending to or willing to join. But though, though they have not been invited, 
uh, they it's so quite clear that they'll be partners, uh, observers, uh, uh, you know, consulting partners and things like that. So that is quite clear. And those new, particularly mentioned UAE in this context. And as you know, there is another quad which includes UAE, India, US, Israel, and UAE. There's another quad. One doesn't hear much about it, but the cooperation between UAE and Israel has increased tremendously in the last few months. And uh, so in the light of that, perhaps uh, uh, this has come. Then um, the disputes that China has with most of these countries uh, did not figure. So in the discussions in Melbourne, uh, there were, of course, they were all conscious of the uh, disputes that uh, China has with uh, different countries on the question of Taiwan, there's a big difference with the United States. On Japan, there is the Senkaku Islands. In um, uh, uh, India, there is the military action against uh, India in Ladakh. And none of these were referred to. So in a no change in the uh, posture towards China as such, uh, but uh, they were all very, very, very careful. Uh, avoided India avoided any answer as far as uh, Ukraine was concerned. So there was um, a, a stern message against cross-border terrorism. And this is again something that my, we may have insisted on, though we were soft about China, but we didn't want to be soft about Pakistan. So a stern message was there in the, in the joint statement against cross-border terrorism and uh, you know, breaking or disrupting peace and solidarity uh, in, um, in South Asia, as well as in something about North Korea. So uh, the, the whole reflection that we have to notice is that uh, the, uh, the, the apprehension that many people have that after the formation of AUKUS, Quad has become less significant as an instrument of policy in the Indian Ocean region. So that is something you have to mark. And that means it makes us weaker vis-a-vis -vis China and also vis-a-vis -vis Russia. And then what is it that in store for us? If uh, China becomes more suspicious of Russia, and uh, they become suspicious of India's military cooperation with Russia. And we want to move further towards the United States. And then if the United States turning a uh, quad into a, into a civilian or humanitarian or, or agency, then the strength that we had at the time of the end of uh, uh, President Trump's uh, tenure, the kind of solid support that we got from the US will disappear, or it's already almost disappeared. And therefore, will China will become more intransigent and they will not disengage as they were doing at one time. So that, that's uh, the quad angle or the, or the strength that we had of this group as a counter against China is weakening. This is what I wanted to uh, explain to you. And uh, coming back to the Ukraine situation, uh, India is in a dilemma because we cannot take a position which is against Russia. And um, so we have to do a lot of um, you know, tight rope walking. Our external affairs ministry is in France uh, trying to assist the French government to intervene in some form. And uh, therefore, the European angle has become more uh, prominent in our thinking rather than the Indo-Pacific specific angle. So the whole question of uh, the utility of um, the Quad for us in our defense against China is weakening. And at the same time, the Russia-China alliance with the possible partnership of Iran and Pakistan is also providing a lot of challenges to India. So the November, the, sorry, the February meeting of the Quad in Melbourne 
has sent out these signals that uh, that we should watch. Let us hope that the Ukraine situation will be resolved sooner or later. And today there was an interesting revelation uh, that uh, there were very serious discussion between President Yeltsin and President Clinton in the early 90s when the Soviet Union broke up. There have been rumors that there were agreements between US and uh, New Russia, that is Yeltsin, uh, that NATO expansion will not take place. And uh, that is not, not confirmed very much, but now letters exchanged between President Yeltsin and President Clinton have emerged from the archives of the US uh, State Department, where Clinton has given specific assurances to Russia that, uh, of course, he doesn't say that it will be not be done, but he said it will be slow, and if at all NATO expands, it will be an inclusive expansion in the sense that it will not be against Russia, but even Russia could be included in NATO. That's the suggestion he made. And uh, he kept saying that nothing will be done against the interests of Russia, sensitivity is there. And President Yeltsin, we did not think of, I did not think personally of Yeltsin as a, uh, as a statesman or, uh, or a strong person, because Yeltsin was absolutely like a slave of the United States when he became president, because he had no money, he had no strength, and therefore he was behaving like a, like a, a slave state of the United States at that time. Uh, but to look at these letters, you will find that he was very specific and very strong about NATO. And Clinton was avoiding an assurance, but he virtually gave that assurance that nothing will be done in the expansion of NATO, which they were not interested in immediately. And if it's all something happens, that will be with the partnership. It will be more a partnership with uh, Russia rather than an antagonistic NATO becoming stronger. So there's a new element that you might watch for in, uh, in the developing drama relating to Ukraine. So we are still on the edge of war and not in it yet. And for the sake of everyone, particularly for India, which will be in a real dilemma this if this becomes a war, we hope and pray that it does not become a full-fledged war between Russia and Ukraine, into which the European Union and the United States can be dropped, dragged. But they are now talking about only sanctions, and sanctions will mean not a war, but certainly um, difficulties for many countries, including us, uh, but at least no destruction of people or, or uh, cities. And that's the only hope we have. That's all for today. Thank you very much.